Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and we are live tonight. I don't necessarily have a topic. I'm just going to cover some housekeeping things and then take any questions tonight. So I'm just waiting for viewers to enter the chat room at this time. I'm just waiting for viewers to enter. We're up to 15 viewers. I like to wait until we have around 25. We may or may not get it tonight because I don't have a topic or I didn't post a topic anyway. So welcome everybody. We're up to like 18. And I have my iPad over here. Okay. So we're at 21 viewers. And let me just look at the chat for a second. So for some reason, my head mic is not working tonight. It says that it's on, but it's not giving me power. So I'm hoping that if I talk straight to the camera whenever I'm speaking, that it will be okay tonight. If you can't hear me, just let me know in the chat box. So we have some people already in the chat box. So we have Hazel from the UK. Hi, Hazel. We got Trisha. She says, hi, T. She's laughing out loud because she got here early. Got Erica. Hi, Erica Selman. She has a website about quilting as well. Got Hannah Beauty Love. How are you doing tonight? And we got Linda from Tampa. Hello, Linda. Got Eva. Hi, Patty. Got Darlene. Greetings from Northern Virginia. Got Sharon says good evening from Drab, Michigan. <laughs> Join the club. Got Bernice. Got June from Iowa. Hazel. Says, I love your iPad stand. I'll talk about that in a minute. My cover is so bad. I've had this cover for many years, so it's, it's well beat up, but my iPad is beautiful. We got Linda. She says, We can hear you. Well, thanks everybody, because I'm trying to make sure that I talk at the camera, but it's real difficult when I'm reading to the side. So anytime you can't hear me tonight, just let me know. We got Kathy. From Ontario. Hi, Kathy. Welcome back. We got Linda. Hi from Rockaway, New Jersey. Love your videos. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. And June is saying she can hear you. Got Bonita here. Hi, Miss T. I'm watching you on my TV tonight, so I will see everything in HD. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. The reason why I had my iPad here. It's because I've been getting some people saying that they can't figure out where to ch click for chat. Let me take it off the stand for just a minute. And I'm not even sure if I can get this to show up on film. But down here, so if I click my chat box back down, when I first come to my live feed, this is what I'm looking at on my iPad. And every device that you have is going to be different. Sometimes the chat box will automatically be over here. And other times you've got to go down here and it's a little button that says top chat. And then you can also change it if you click the down button. You can actually change it. So the chat box popped up because I'm not looking at it direct. But then you can change this to live chat as well. So either way. 
then some people said that when they come on, they don't comment because it has a dollar mark over here for Super Chat. Uh, if you press the, after you type your text, if you press the Super Chat, then it's trying to have you send me money. And you don't have to press that button. You just hit enter. You shouldn't have to click the money button to enter into chat. And then you can post anything in the chat box. So some people are having difficulty finding the chat box. The other thing that is common is that if someone comes to the page five minutes early and then I go live four minutes later, they don't realize that we're live. If we're not live at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, just refresh your page and then we should pop right in. So we have Silverita from Virginia, got Lauren from Dallas, Texas, and Kaylin Stitched Art Studio from Ottawa, Canada. Hi, Kaylin. So that's one housekeeping thing I wanted to take care of. I really don't have a topic tonight. I'll just talk about uh, some stuff that I done in the past week, which was visit with Havana, Illinois. I went on Friday morning did a lecture a three-hour lecture actually my lectures are normally one hour but i spread it across three hours for a special event at two of moss got a notion it's an actual quilt shop in havana illinois she was sponsored me this weekend and i just want to just give shout outs to all of her hospitality she also gave me a place to stay on Friday night because I had a workshop on Saturday. So I stayed in her home, her and her husband, and they were great hosts. I had a wonderful time, was welcomed by many very friendly quilters. The town was bigger than what I was expecting. I was expecting it only to be like Main Street businesses when you enter into small towns, but they had, it was very much so larger than what I expected. I actually have my video ready to upload, but I couldn't do it today because I can't upload while I'm also being live. It, it just makes everything drag. So um, I just wanna thank all of the people that came to that presentation and I had a wonderful time and the video is coming and we even did some line dancing, which if you're in my Facebook group, you already know that. I post some things over there when I'm not able to get onto YouTube, but I will be uploading the video uh, or more of a vlog for my event, but I don't take, I didn't take any of the lecture because I'm busy working. And then I have a separate video that I will upload of the line dance because the music is copyrighted. So I can't put it in my regular vlog. So that, what happened on Saturday and Sunday? I still see more people were coming in. We got Joan. She says, hi, T, I love your videos. Well, thank you, Joan. I appreciate that. I've got things popping up here. Okay. Don't want that. So we also have uh, Silverita says she's watching on TV also. Again, if you can't hear me when I'm turning my head, just give me some reminders in the chat box. And Darlene says she had to reboot her tablet. Hannah says, is it smart to buy bolts of fabric for your background for the quilt? If so, where to buy? Um, how I actually get the backgrounds for my quilts, and I'm already hot flashing, and I'm trying not to cut the fan on because it adds to the noise, especially when I don't have a microphone to speak over it. <laughs> so I'm going to find a card or something. Ugh. <laughs> okay. So where to uh, find background fabric and how do you buy it? Okay, I do two things for my backgrounds. If I'm doing a scrappy background, then it doesn't matter. I just use whatever fabrics that I have available. But there are times when you want to use one fabric for a background. Most times if I find a background fabric that I really like, I'll go ahead and buy the whole boat. 
And when I buy the bolts, I try to find fabrics that are already on sale, either at my local quilt shop or I'll try to find something online. Because if you're talking about backgrounds and you're more dealing with your neutrals, you're mostly looking for a particular tone of fabric, not necessarily a particular print per se. Because I don't really care what the print is, if it's the right shade or tone of a color that I'm looking for. So I just tend to buy the whole boat or at least five, six yards if I'm doing, if it's for a bed size quilt, I might buy five or six yards. If it's on sale and I know that I can use it elsewhere and it's eight yards on a boat, then I'll buy whatever's on the boat. So that's how I've kind of collected my stash. And now, even if I don't have enough of one particular fabric to do a quilt with, I just make it all scrappy. I like to buy online from Hancock's of Paducah. They have a section in their sales area. They'll have the fabrics listed by $3 per yard, $4 per yard, $5 per yard, and so on if I'm ordering online. Other places online, I'm just blocking right now because I, I haven't really been purchasing a whole lot of yardage for background since I have kind of taken care of that when I go to my Ace Hardware that's located in St. Clair, Missouri. I do that like once or twice a year. It's about an hour and a half drive from my home. And then I tend to buy all of my light background fabrics from them because they're just cheaper. But so I don't really buy a whole lot of background fabrics online. I would have to say it would be Hancock's of Paducah. And Joan says that she's from Iowa. Kathy says, hi T, any plans for all of your beautiful gifted fabrics? Actually, I was looking for gifts for various things, and I will keep some of them. I would most definitely be keeping like the African thing fabrics because those are prints that I did not have. And then I'm going to be sharing some of them with the participants at the retreat that I'm scheduling that I have scheduled in September. I don't I forgot the dates. At Missouri Star Quilt Company. We're actually going there for five days. And so I was looking for door prizes and things that I could do for that. So that will help with that. And then I also give gifts to my friends and my small sewing group that we meet in each other's homes for our birthday months. So I will be giving them something of that as well. So that's the plan for that right now. <laughs> And that was really nice of Barbara to send that to me. It was a blessing. And I didn't even know. It was just ironic that she contacted me at the same time that I was starting to look for things as gifts. So that was really sweet. Linda says, hello, everyone and T. Hi, Linda. Uh, Bonita says, I saw your video on the new rulers. Does this company sell any other notions? Yes, they do. Um, if you use the link that I gave you, you can still use your 10% code at any time. And then you they have other rulers, rotary cutters, blades. What I did was I was actually contacted by them and I don't sponsor a lot of things that are presented to me because they have nothing to do with quilting. I get a lot of companies wanting me to sponsor their products, be it silk flowers, uh, art supplies. But if I don't actually use them for quilting or scrapbooking, then I don't feel comfortable reviewing their product. So when they contacted me, the first thing I always do when I'm contacted is I go to their website to see what it is that they sell. And I go through the notions and they do not have a lot of quilting supplies at this time, but they do have rulers, mats, rotary cutters, blades, uh, the, the rings you put on the back of your rulers to keep from slipping. And I can't remember everything, but that's the first thing I did. And then they asked me to pick a product from the website. So what I did was I, I picked the product that I could actually use. 
And so I, I did that. And then they actually sent it to me for free. They actually uh, allowed me to pick one product. Now, they had other products that cost more than those rulers, but I was looking for something that was a good buy for everybody, not just me getting something free and also something that I could use. Because I do love having square rulers in the various different sizes. And then these were different with having that edge of your block that was going to be sewn in showing on the ruler. So, yeah. They do sell some other things, but it's not a lot at this time. So we got Tammy here from Ohio. Welcome, Tammy. Karen says, I want to buy a boat of my favorite white on white neutral. It's not see-through like a lot of white fabrics are. I'm just waiting for a sale. And Sharon, if you could share that, what website you buy that from or where you buy that from would be great because we have, I think it was Joan who asked. No, it was Hannah. I'm sorry, it was Hannah. If you could share where you buy online would be great. That'll be a resource for her. And I do know that there's uh, discount companies. I'm just blocking the name of them because there was a company that I used to buy from and I would buy the whole boat, whatever they had left, or it was called Buy the Boat or something like that. And I'm sure one of you all will know. Darlene says, hot flashes. I have more night sweats as opposed to hot flashes. Uh, Bonita says, yes, I want to know when you're going to ace. <laughs> okay. And Silveretta says she got her first order of background fabric from Missouri Star Quilt Company. So you can try them as well. I don't know what their prices are, but I always like to check any websites clearance section first, especially for tone on tone or or my light print backgrounds, I like to check the clearance section first because it's not going to necessarily be the star of the quilt because it is the background. So I always start there. Erica says, I just bought several yards for backing, but it was more expensive than I wanted. I am justifying the purchase because it is my oldest son graduation quilt. I usually prefer to get the 108 backing. And that's another way to actually buy background fabric that you want to use as, I mean, backing, purchase backing instead of getting background fabric sometimes. Because if you think about something that's 108 inches wide, that's three yards. And if it's $15, $16 a yard, then that's cheaper than buying three yards on a boat 45 inches wide, if you think about the, the math on that. So it may seem sometimes like it's more expensive, but I have seen backing fabrics that are up to $30 a yard. So you got to be careful which backing fabric you have. Now, I don't know what her online prices are, but Sue from Moss Got a Notions Quilt Shop in Havana, Illinois, also specializes in backing. And I know I've had Becky from my Quilt Guild send me a site that dealt with backings as well. So if I can figure that out, I'll add it in the description box, like maybe tomorrow, because <laughs> I have to look for that information. Hazel says, can you send me the link for rulers, please? Hazel, I just uploaded a video today uh, for a company called Arteza. It's a product review. The link is in the description field. I put it all in there so it'll take you right to the rulers. They were, I have the rulers here as a matter of fact. I was really surprised with these because I bought the green rulers, which are your OFA rulers, and I don't have a one of them in here now. Isn't that something? I took them out to take them to Havana, Illinois, and I didn't put them back in here. So I don't have any of the OFA green rulers, but I do like these because they're not green all the way out on the edge. And I found that when I used the OFA green rulers, that when I put it on top of green fabric, it was hard for me to see the edge of the fabric. And because it's not green all the way out to the edge. I can still see the edge of my fabric. So I was really impressed with that. 
But what's included in that video is they have four square up rulers and I work with scraps. And in, even in my lecture, even my lecture this weekend, I talk about if you're cutting scraps and then you are starting to square things up, even your quilt blocks. I don't like to use the biggest size ruler. Most, most of us have the 12 and a half inch ruler for squaring up. But if I'm squaring up two inch blocks, then I want something that's smaller. I don't want to be messing with this. And then when I put it down, it's so far from my cutting reach because I'm dealing with such a bigger ruler. But yeah, but I did bring them. And then they had these little round dots that I put on the backside to stabilize the ruler. So that, that was included in the packaging. And these four rulers, I've got a 12 and a half, a nine and a half, a six inch. Yeah, six inch and then a four and a half. And then I also got the non-slip adhesive rings. Now it said on here that it was 48. And I don't know if they were counting the little inner circles as parts of them, but I thought this was a great value for $18.99. And then if you use the discount code that I gave you, you'll get an additional 10% off and you'll spend around $18.18. And my screen has just disappeared. I think I hit the mouse while I was showing the rulers. So yeah, so I thought that was a good deal. The other thing that I want to bring up in my Facebook group, I had some people inquiring about the twirling strings video. I have, those videos are no longer live. And that's because a lot of people had been asking me for the pattern. So now I have a 13 page color pattern. And the pattern is $15 because it's all color. So if you're interested in this, I'll have to add a link to the bottom of this video. But it's on my T-Quilts, www.tquilts.com website. And so it's got all of the information all in color listed in the pattern. I even got all of the choices that I gave you in the video. And it took quite a few pages to get this done. So you're basically paying for color printing for the most part. And it took me like two or three days to watch those six videos so that I could compile this pattern. So then at that point, I could not give it away for free. Okay, we're back in the comment section. She says, um, I guess I'm missing. It scrolled up. Let me go back down. <laughs> Sharon's telling Erica, if you try really hard, you can justify about any fabric you purchase. <laughs> I just say, you know, we work, we, long as you're not in debt with the quilting, get what you want. I don't spend money in other areas, so I, I spend money on my crafting. So, Hazel, the link is in the description of a previous video I uploaded today. Uh, Tricia says, Hannah, just for clarification, are you seeking where to buy yardage for backing or background? So, Hannah says, just background. Eric says, hello. Hi, Eric. Okay, so another resource for online discount, try quilted twins and thousands of bolts. That's the one I was looking for was thousands of bolts. And then there's still one more that my friend Becky told me about, but I haven't purchased from them yet. But if I can get the name of that one within the next 24 hours, I will put it in the description box of this video. And she says, I have bought from both and the fabric is good quality. And it's been so long ago that I thought purchased fabric from thousands of bolts. So I can't even tell you what's going on over there. But I know when I was purchasing that it was remarkably cheaper than anywhere else when you're buying a lot of one particular fabric. Cindy says, hello from Wisconsin. Happy 
to join the live tonight. Hi, Cindy. Welcome. Uh, Bonita says, do you know of any shops in the area where you have quilting events that will rent a sewing machine? Most of the times when we have, I don't know if you're asking me if I'm having a event <laughs> in renting machines, I haven't had to do that. Most of the stores in my area, when they have quilting events, the machine usage is included in the fee for going. So even if we're taking classes, most of our quilt shops in the STL area, the St. Louis area, have uh, machines that are already set up so you don't have to bring your own sewing machines. And they have all the quarter inch foot. You just bring your thread and they will uh, even help you wind the bobbin. I hope that answered your question, Benita. And Deb C says, wow, look at all the lines on it. Yes, it does. These rulers do have a lot of lines. Let me get one like the nine inch, not the 12. Because I really didn't go into, I didn't show how to use these other lines on the rulers, but they've got like your 45 degree lines, your 60 degree, and then they even got the 30 degree lines. So if you're trying to cut diamonds or cut something on an angle, they already got the markings on here and they've got them in two directions on the ruler which i thought was pretty cool so i do plan to be using these a lot because i can see the potential for them especially when i start working on my ice spy quilt that i want to make hi hc says hello t and everyone is backing fabric any different than none backing fabric is it supposed to be thicker i think it just depends sometimes you have different grades like you do in regular fabrics you have different grades and quality in your uh, backing fabric if you buy k facet 45 inch fabric yardage their 108 inch yardage is exactly the same i have purchased their backing fabric and there's no difference so it just depends on whose fabric you're purchasing. I think it's the same as in purchasing your regular quilting fabric. You got different grades and quality. Kathy says, that's a great price on those rulers. She says, I actually have a ruler for squaring up. That's Darlene. Yeah, and that's the thing. What size is your one ruler? Do you have more than one ruler for squaring up? HC says, I bought some backing from Amazon, but it didn't seem any different. Uh, Sharon says, strange as it may seem, the best white on white is at Joann's. I had two back surgeries and can't get out to shop. But when I can, my credit card is going to be smoking. <laughs> So that's interesting. I buy some fabrics at Joann's, but I have to be careful about picking certain ones because some of them seem like they're very hard and thin. And then I have to be, some of the, when they get into their premium quilting fabrics, they're more expensive than going to a quilt shop. And that part, I don't understand how you're, how some of their fabrics is more expensive than quilt shop fabrics. And then if you go buy Christmas fabrics and they say they're having half off of their Christmas fabrics, well, then their original price might be $15 or $16. I'm like, that's higher than the quilt store. So sometimes at Joann's, it doesn't make sense all the time. So you got to be careful on what you're buying. And, and she just, I was reading her comments now where she's saying that it is in the more upscale fabric department, which is their premium quilting cotton. We got a gift basket appeal. Hi T, glad I got to catch you live. Hi, welcome to the live chat. Jordan Fabrics has some great fabrics and they have a bunch. I'm thinking they mean on sale right now. So that's Sharon. So that's another place you can check is Jordan Fabrics.
Uh, Erica says, do you have any ideas about quilting a Borgello on the machine? Actually, I don't. Y'all know I can't draw. You do this to me on purpose, right? <laughs> I don't have anything really here to draw, but I'll just try to draw something on this piece of paper here. This is my notes from last um, week. Oops. Okay. <laughs> I actually made a Borgello quilt that I quilted like this. And it kind of looks like it could be flames. So I actually start here and just put a little hook, a little S hook into my stitching. And then I come back down and then I go up and I make those at different heights. And then when I come back through the other row of this, then I come back down in these areas where I have the openings. And I think uh, because what happens with the Bordello, it, it's got kind of a landscape feel. So then you still keep the landscape feel, but you add some curvature to it because everything is so square. So that's how I quilted mine and I really like it. Now it's in storage, so I can't go get it for you. But that would be a suggestion. Otherwise, something with an all over curve to it because they're so um, boxed in, the Bordellos in general. Let's see. I got my comments just scrolling up and I'm trying to get them back. <laughs> Bonita says, good because I don't want to travel with my machine on a plane. Okay. Are you, okay, so she's saying she didn't want to travel with a machine on a plane. So you need to check and make sure that you have a machine available. Eric says, Sharon, how fast does Jordan Fabrics mail out the order? And let's see if she responded. They're pretty fast, maybe a few days, and it arrives. Perfectly ironed and packaged. Someone said, uh, this is, H.E. said, went to Joanne's today and bought 16 fat quarters for 40% off and had a $10 off of $30. Also bought two metallic threads. And... Yeah, Darlene's saying her ruler is a 10-inch square ruler which also allows her to square down. Uh, Kim says, can thin, lighter fabrics be used for backing or is it mainly better for clothing? And she's from Southwestern Wisconsin. It depends on what you mean by thin fabric. If I have thin fabric, I would opt not to use any thin fabric in my quilts. I do want a particular weight of fabric. I want I do want to ensure, even if it's not quilt shop fabric, that it's quilt shop quality fabric, that it's not thin. And my reasoning is if you're making a quilt and you're using that quilt and then that quilt's getting washed and it's rubbing against other fibers or, or bodies. And so you're going to have more of an opportunity for the thinner fabrics to wear faster. And that's where when you see sometimes you'll have old antique quilts and they're worn in particular places where a fabric in a particular square has almost disappeared out the quilt. I just think it was a, it was not as on the same level as some of the other fabrics that were in the quilt. So I personally wouldn't use any thin fabrics in my quilt. And then got Brenda here. Hi, Brenda. Got Kelly. She says, hi, T, to unwind from a challenging trip. I'm currently making a rack quilt. Those are fun, too. Just be careful with the seams on your regular sewing machines. That's why I purchased my Singer Heavy Duty machines, because I ruined two other machines working on those thick quilts like that. 
Erica says, good advice about the Borgello. Hi, Donna. Welcome to the chat. And then Hazel says, do you sew with cotton thread or polyester? Um, I actually have Orphil's thread in my bobbin. It's 100% um, cotton. The 50-22 ply is the weight. And then on the top, I just use a, a cone thread because I don't run out as fast. It's from Superior Threads. It's Masterpiece. It's also number 52-2 ply. It's 3,000 yards. I use the color this on this. So 100% cotton thread. I've also used uh, Coats and Clark thread, which is a mercerized cotton, which means it's cotton that's covering polyester. So I used that for many years. I still have a lot of that in my colors. I haven't been able to replace them all because I've been sewing since 1986. And I also have a serger where when you buy a serger, you've got to buy four spools of the same color. So yeah, I still have some of that thread. Or, you know, some of not the same thread from 1986, but because I've had it before I was quilting, I still have a lot of coats and cloth thread. So I do use it as well. I have a friend that likes Guterman thread. It's 100% polyester. That's all she uses. So it just depends on your preference. Let's see. The only thread that I've had a problem with that was polyester and it's, it wasn't made for what I was doing with it, is that Superior Threads sell a thread called Rainbow Threads, and I quilted a quilt in it, and it's beautiful. It's 100% polyester. And then I wanted to put it in a quilt show. It was a little wall hanging, and I went and pressed it with the iron, and my the heat from the iron made my thread disappear. That's the only time I've had that happen to me with polyester thread. And I'm thinking because it was variegated and had been probably bleached and dyed some kind of way that it wasn't the same strength. But I still use that thread. I just use it in quilts where I know I won't be putting an iron to it. Sharon says she sh sells with cotton thread. Kim says, thanks for the advice. Kelly says, I am using my Juki Excite to make my rag quilt. Okay, I don't know that particular model, so. I'll look that up. I like knowing about different machines. <laughs> Jackie is here. She says, no question. Just want to tell you that I really like your channel. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jackie. I appreciate you coming in to chat with us tonight. Deb C says, hey, T, can you tell me where I would be ordering from to get those rulers? I'm from Ontario, Canada. I'm from Ontario, Canada. I want to know if there's on the other side, if they're on the other side of the world. I don't, I, I forgot exactly where the company is located. But you can check the website and see if the shipping is different. I could try to check it here, but I know I probably will knock something out of whack. But let me try. <laughs> And I'm just going to put anything in the cart just to see what will happen. Let's see. Okay, add to cart. And now I just want to view the cart. 
and I click on checkout. Or let me see if it has anything about shipping on this page. Doesn't have anything about shipping on the checkout page in the cart. And then it's asking for shipping information. So I don't really see it right off. So I don't know at this point. And about us, they do have a contact button, so maybe you can contact them and ask them. I don't see any information listed on their site about the shipping, and I'm turning my head so I can read the text on the side. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going to go to About Us just to see where they're located. It doesn't state. But I must have it in my emails, which is on my other machine. They do have a 1 800 number. Cancel. 1 800. I have to look up here. Sorry. 9890649. It's because of the glare of the lights in my room. Sorry about that. Yeah. So yeah, but I it doesn't stay on their site. I have to do some more investigation. I got lights glaring on my actual screen, so it's hard for me to see. Sharon says, does anyone else use fleece for quilt backing? Fleece for quilt backing. I've been using it for kids quilts and some gift quilts and it quilts up beautifully. You can skip the batting if you use a nice fleece. I have quilted a couple of customer quilts and they were also children quilts where they used the fleece. I don't know why you couldn't use it in all quilts if that's what you want to do. Some people I've done it for, they have still wanted the batting in it. So I've done it both ways and it works beautifully both ways. Does anyone use fusible for applique? I'm using heat and bond light on a quilt I'm working on, but it feels so stiff. Any recommendations would be much appreciated. Okay, Eric, that's your question. When I use heat and bond light, if I'm cutting out, say, a circle, this is my applique piece. When I'm tracing this out to cut on heat and bond light, I do use heat and bond light. I buy it by the boat, as a matter of fact. But when I cut that circle out, what I do is I trim back around on the inside of that circle. So I have a second line. And what I do is I'm cutting out, and all I'm putting on the circle is just this rim. So that way, the whole entire piece of the applique isn't bulky. And I do that on all of my larger pieces. Now, if it's a little bitty circle like that, then I'll just go ahead and put the whole piece on the back of the fabric. But I always trim on the inside of my applique piece. Once I trace the outer edge that I want, I don't draw the other line. I just take my scissors and I'm going to cut like three eighths of an inch inside of that line. That reduces a lot of bulk in your quilt, especially if you're using it for a bed quilt. If you're using it for a wall quilt, it probably wouldn't matter as much, but on bed quilts, you don't want them to be super stiff. Hi, so love. Welcome. <laughs> she says, uh, Sharon is talking to someone about using the fleece. She says she makes sure that she doesn't need a seam so the quilt can be over 60 inches but that's big enough for children quilts. And I think that I have done one for a customer where she had a seam in the middle of her fleece and still use quilt batting and it was still fine. So I think it will work either way. I'm assuming I have Shauna here, hi. She's with Chris and Shauna, hi. 
How do you not hold the bobbin thread when quilting? Why? How do you not hold the bobbin thread when quilting? Um, I don't, I don't, I'm thinking I'm just misinterpreting your question, but if I'm quilting, I do pull my bobbin thread up to the top. I do hold on to my top and bottom thread, and then I do a very few stitches, like three or four stitches in a very short space, and that's how I'm actually locking my thread. So it's very tiny that you probably couldn't even see it with your eye. Or you can just go ahead and do three or four stitches in place. But you need to lock the threads or you need, if you don't lock your threads, you need to thread your needle and bury your ends. If you're entering a quilt show that's buried or got prizes attached to it, you want to actually bury your threads. I don't bury my threads on just generic bed quilts. So I just don't take time to do that. Thank you for trying. I think that's what I'll do. Contact them. That's Deb just thanking me for trying to go to our tag and site. It's, I think it's mostly because I can't see <laughs> my screen. Anything that's on a white background, which their site is, I have difficulty seeing when I'm in the room with all the lights. Darling says, I hear my cat crying at the bedroom door. Does she not understand that I'm talking quilts? <laughs> Okay, so Eric's finally got it and he says, okay, thanks T, love the drawing. <laughs> I told you I can't draw anything, but I have good spirit about it. I already know it, but that doesn't stop me from trying. So, Got Chris thanking me. June is talking to Sharon. And then Sandra is here. She says, hi, T. Finally found chat on my iPad. Enjoying all of the great info. Welcome, Sandra. We've been on here now about 45 minutes. We've got like about 15 more minutes to go. If anybody got any questions. I thought it was something else that I meant to talk about, but I can't remember now. I did talk about the rulers. I talked about the patterns. I talked about my weekend. Maybe that was it. <laughs> Donna Myers says, I missed what rulers you were talking about. Uh, I uploaded a video today about some scrub rulers from Arteza. And they are four scrub rulers. And they are on sale for... $18.99. And then I have a link in my description box that will also give you an additional 10% off. And you can, um, you'll end up paying like $18.18 .18, somewhere around there for your order right before shipping. And then they also have the little plastic rings underneath in, included that you put on the back of the rulers to keep them from slipping. So I thought that was a pretty good, um, uh-oh, I forgot I pulled my thread up. <laughs> and my thread broke. So Darlene, it's all at the beginning of this video. So once it goes live, you can also Watch this video, but you'll probably do better to go watch the review I did of the rulers. <laughs> and Gwen is reminding everybody to hit the like button. Thank you, Gwen. <laughs> Eric say, oh, I hit like, even though we're not done. I appreciate you guys. You all are so nice. 
Darlene asked, what is the oldest quilt that has crossed my path? When I was working, we have an auxiliary and then we had auctions, blind auctions, but they weren't really blind auctions because they just had a piece of paper on a clipboard and then whoever, if somebody bid $5 at the top and then you bid $7 right under them, you're the highest bidder. So if you're bidding higher, you just keep adding to the list. So it wasn't really a, a blind auction, although that's what they called it. But um, I had a quilt come in and it started out I think like $20 for this quilt. And I didn't know anything about the quilt or the design at the time. And the one thing that I noticed was that it had a very weird color orange in the quilt. And so I thought, I wonder if from reading books on history on, and had quilts in them, if this is the quilt that they used the orange print because when they were living in log cabins without electricity, they would use the color orange to give a little brightness to the quilt top. And so I bid it on that. I think, I can't remember if I got to $35 or $40 for this quilt. And I purchased it and then I did go have it appraised. It was a, because I didn't have the maker's information, didn't know where it was actually made because I asked the people at the top and the family that even donated the quilt didn't know anything about the quilt. But I, so it what, didn't appraise that much. I'm just going to estimate about $500. And it might have been about a 72 square inch quilt. And the quilt was dated back into the late 1800s. And she did like an era. So it, like late 1890s to 1900s is how she kind of worded it. So that's the oldest quilt that I have in my collection. As far as me coming across, I have absolutely no idea because I viewed a lot of old quilts, but I don't know the information on them. But the one that's in my collection is that old. And <laughs> Eric says he wished there was a love button. <laughs> I think I missed somebody's comment up above. Let me go back. I thought I had a question before the bobbin question, but I could be mistaken. If I, if you had a question that's already been passed and I didn't answer it, can you retype it for me because I'm not intentionally not answering your question? Um, Kelly says, Have you spoke on creative grids quilting template? Yes, I think I spoke about these in other videos. I actually do love their rulers and they actually already come with the grid marks on them. And I do have like maybe five or six of their rulers. And I do love to buy their rulers when they're specialty rulers, exactly, especially like their 60 degree triangle rulers. 45 degree triangle rulers. Um, and that's because I got most of my basic sizes already in other rulers. And unless I break a ruler or am replacing a ruler, I just have been using what I have. Sometimes as I use rulers, I notice that the grid lines start to wear if you use one every day for five or six years, the lines start to get faint. So then I start replacing those. But I do like Creative Grids rulers as well. <laughs> so June, I think, is talking with uh, Sharon, I'm, I'm guessing. But she's saying she had a queen size quilt for a customer and she's pulling her hair out but I have done it on smaller ones and have had no problems. And I'm thinking they're still talking about the fleece. Well, I think when I did mines on the fleece, it was just a little bit over 60 inches. 
So it, it was maybe like 70, 72 inches, but I did have a seam in it and I didn't have a problem, but it didn't stretch the entire length of my long arm either. So. And I guess it could also depend if you're long arm quilting, how you put it on your frame as well. Donna says, uh, share T site also. My actual website is www.tquilts, T E A, quilts with an S. Dot com. And I do have like a few patterns that I have listed on my website. At some point, I'll do a video on my website. But I just haven't gotten to it. I do have some videos that I have recorded. I actually have finished my Bonnie Hunter quilt. I did a little bit of the recording on the quilting on that. I have quilted um, a Mizzou quilt. It's not a t shirt quilt, but it's just a quilt that I made for some one who's graduating next year that wants to go to Mizzou. So I quilted that and I think I recorded. I quilted uh, a 1930s quilt where I did some custom quilting. So I did that. I just have not had time to edit videos. My months have been filled with working for the projects for those months. So now that Havana is over, I've got to put some things up. And I got my quilts put up, but I don't have all the other stuff that I took. Um, and then I need to try to get some videos out. I need um, I need some quilt block videos. I need some other stuff. So we'll see how I go. I'm still haven't done anything with the quilters patch. I missed the month of March, and I'm hoping that I can at least get April's in, although it will be late. So I'm not sure if it'll be up Sunday, but. Just know that I am working on quilting videos and I even have some paper crafting hauls as well. And Kelly is saying, <laughs> okay, so I misunderstood Kelly's question. She's speaking about the free motion quilting ruler templates for creative grids. Then my answer to that would be no, because I don't have any creative grids long arm rulers or quilting rulers. I don't have those. Um, I don't quilt on my home machine. And then for the basics for as arcs and curves and feathers, circles and squares, I already have those rulers by other companies. So I don't really have that. So maybe I'll do, I think I've done a haul where I've showed like some of my long arm stuff, but maybe I'll do some other videos for long arm quilting rulers where I just do the rulers that I have. I can do something like that as well. Um, you know, I'm getting my comments so very late. Um, HC is saying I love to see them in person, that would be fantastic. I don't know what she wants to see in person. I'm, my screen has just skipped all over the place. <laughs> so maybe I missed something. Quilting templates. So I've answered that. Dion says, okay, well, mine is a queen size. So I think I talked about that. <laughs> uh, Darlene's asking me, have I seen the G's Benz quilts? The G's Benz quilt came to our history museum. I'm just going to guess and say like 10 years ago. And I did make my way over to see those quilts. Yes, I did. Darlene says she watched a documentary on YouTube, said it was very interesting. No, H, well, yes, Darlene said that. Okay. Sh 
Sharon said, I've watched the bed turnings of antique quilts on YouTube. Some are very cool. One of my videos, I actually did a bed turning in, and I can't even remember which one. It was a quilt show. I think it was in Cape Girardo where I take the entire bed turning. And it might have been like maybe three years ago, maybe. But those are pretty cool. And you have such stories behind the quilts. So bed turnings are just awesome. Chris and uh, Shauna says, you just popped up on a recommended video. I am so glad. I have been asking channels for so long. You're the only live one that has answered me. Thank you. Checking out your channel now, Hugs. Well, you're more than welcome. I tend to answer anything that I can during the live presentation. And if I can't, then I'll save it for a future week. So I do try to answer any questions or comments on my channel so if you're looking at videos and leave a comment or asking a question even if it's an old video i try to answer those as well so thank you for that kim says do you have a creative grids quick trim ruler from a local shop i just got one and still learning to use it i don't know what that is a creative grids quick trim ruler i'll write it down And June says, I just sing on my regular sewing, flip and sew, so no one is just a little half inch short. I'm just singing on my, <laughs> sewing on my regular sewing flip. <laughs> okay, you're welcome, Kelly. So we're right at 8.01. So if we got any more questions, go ahead and pop them into the box. I'll wait a little bit. I do try to get off at eight, just do an hour. But if we got additional questions or still chatting, I'm okay with that as well. Today, I'm just trying to make um, scrappy half square and quarter square triangles. That's what I was trying to work on today. So I'm uh, working on Glycine Fitzgerald's mystery quilt. She has a Facebook group. It's now closed. And I am trying to get caught up on that. I need to make eight blocks to be caught up. <laughs> okay. So it looks like I'm not seeing any other questions. So if you, um, the one on the creative grids, quick trim ruler, I have to look that up. And then maybe we can talk about it next week. Or I can pop something in the comment field later for you. Let me write your name down. That was Kim. Okay, and thanks for the question. I just don't know the answer to that particular question. If I have the ruler, I will definitely give you an answer. And if I look at it and I can figure it out just from looking at it, then I will do that as well. Darlene says, please talk about embellishments on quilts in the future. That's actually one of my favorite. I have a lot of embellishments in quilts. And actually, when I did a YouTube channel, we did a block swap where we had to have at least three different embellishments. And I had a whole slew of what could be considered an embellishment. I don't know if I'm going to be able to visually show you everything, but I can definitely put that down. We'll see how much I can do for that. But that's a good topic. And thank you. Uh, was it Darlene? It's going so fast here. <laughs> Let me go back and see if I can find it. That was Darlene, yes. I try to write these things down so I don't forget because it's so much going through my head. It's It's just scary. Have fun, Eric, presenting at the Guild. That is so much fun. And then 
So if anybody else has any topics you'd like for me to cover during some of our live presentations, and you know this quote embellishments might be one that might be a great one for an actual standalone video. So that way you'll get very good visual graphics because this camera on this laptop is not very good. So I'll consider that as well. But I'll maybe do something where we just talk about embellishments here, but then I'll do a full video later on quote embellishments and make it so that it's more expanded with some examples. So yeah. So good night, everybody. I think that's it. I'd like to thank you all for coming to chat with me tonight. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye. You know, next week is um, International Quilt Festival. And I probably will not be live. Or if I do, I just might pop in on my phone because I'm going to be out of town. I'm thinking I'm going to Chicago International Quilt Festival. So I may not be available next week. So I'll see you in two weeks, sure. Otherwise, it'll just be a pop-up one day next week. So I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.